Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today, I have another video for you, and this is the Razer Kishi. This is a gaming controller for Android. This is part two of two of my uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming video series. So, uh, I did a video uh, demonstrating the Xbox Cloud Gaming functionality on an Android device. I have the Samsung Galaxy S10, uh, is it S10 Lite? I think it is, is what this one's called. Um, and I got the, uh, this gaming clip to attach an Xbox controller to this device and be able to play. And so we tried out the Xbox Cloud Gaming feature, previously known as xCloud. Uh, it's built into the Game Pass app on Android, currently not supported on iOS as of the recording of this video, unfortunately. Um, and so, this is part two, where I wanted to demo a, a dedicated gaming controller beyond just using the Xbox controller, but this will actually attach onto the Android device and be able to play the games just like that. And so I thought that'd be really cool to try out. Uh, and so, and also they've actually recently, uh, on Android added an update to the Xbox app. There's a beta version that will allow you to play some games that are installed on your console via remote play. So I figured we might be able to try that as well. So lots of fun stuff here in part two uh, of, of this Xbox Cloud Gaming video series. And so here it is right here, Razer Kishi. Um, box is actually smaller than I expected it to be, but I guess that makes sense. It's not, it's not much to it. It's a, you know, these little uh, controller attachments for your phone. Now, there's actually different versions of this. This one was $79.99. I actually had pre-ordered the new version, that is the Xbox version, that uh, is $99.99. However, it's the exact same thing as this. It works on Android phones and everything, except instead of a home button here, it actually has like the Xbox logo, and instead of that back button, it's, you know, another Xbox button. Like, the buttons are themed like Xbox, the the colors, everything, it's, it's, but it's the exact same device, just Xbox branded, 20 more dollars. And also, I pre-ordered it weeks ago, and it's still not coming for like another month, so I said, screw it, I canceled the pre-order and just ordered this one, and it arrived in a couple days. So, literally, there's no reason to wait. If you want the Razer Kishi right now, save yourself $20 and just get the non-Xbox branded one. But if, if you're a die-hard Xbox fan and you must have your Xbox logo on there, I guess you're gonna have to wait until you can get your hands on it. So, uh, it does have clickable analog thumbsticks, fits most Android devices, ergonomic design. Uh, yeah, pretty simple style packaging here. The back, again, shows you um, everything that it lists. It does have USB Type-C charging, uh, which is convenient. And it's actually a USB-C pass-through uh, charging. So, uh, if you do, want to plug in your charger and continue gaming, you can do so, which is very, very helpful. Um, all right, and here it is. Inside, is this, yeah, this is something, right? Oh, you get some, uh, some stickers here, some razor stickers, so there you go. Uh, you do have a little instruction booklet type thing right here. So you do need Andro, Andro, Android 8.0 Oreo or higher um, in order for this to work. And uh, yeah, here's the here's the thing. Uh, to expand the controller, see reverse side for instructions. So there you go. Pull both of the release latches to expand the controller. Um, so they, they kind of added little stickers that have information on them. So let's peel off the stickers. Okay. And peel this one off. Nice and satisfying. Look at that Razer logo right there. Um, let's attach those right there. And uh, this is it when it's collapsed. So it's nice and portable. It's not super big, um, which, is, which is great if you want to carry around this controller for your phone. So that's... <laughs> That's pretty cool. It definitely reminds me of, of you know, the concept here being like two Joy-Cons and how you can attach Joy-Cons onto, you know, the sides of your Switch and then combine them together for a more traditional style controller. Although in this case, you can't really do that because, well, one, Joy-Cons require that separate grip, whereas this is just, you separate that and that's your 
Joy-Cons per se. And also you can't really play like this. Like this doesn't plug into anything. You have to have your phone in the middle. But collapsing it does make it nice and easy for portability. Uh, this is your charging port, to say charging only. Uh, so there's your USB-C charging right there. Um, but basically, as you can see, you have your, your D-pad. Um, kind of mushy style buttons there. Um, you have your home and back button, A, B, X, Y, uh, right there. Your controllers, clickable thumbsticks, forward button right there. Uh, some razor branding on the side right there and on the side here. Uh, L1, L2, R1, R2. These feel like they might be analog. Maybe not. Uh, I guess it depends on the software, but there's there's definitely like a um, you can push down a lot or a little bit. Uh, I guess it just depends on how the game registers those. So that's really cool. So basically, let's uh, try this thing out. So you expand this, and uh, looks like this just kind of pops out, and now this folds out. So if you want to reconnect it, you just I assume click it back in. Does it just line up, I guess, and you just... Maybe I should read the instructions, that might be, that might be helpful. Um, well, with it open, um, here, let's just, let's just check real quick, just to make sure I don't break anything. Uh, if you do want to actually collapse this thing, um, or bring its two ties together, make sure the tabs are in the middle. Okay. So, you bring this here, make sure these tabs are in the middle. Oh, I see. So to collapse it, you do that, and then you push this in. Oh, and now it's connected. Um, so that's how that works. To open it, you pull this open. So you do the the opposite, basically, and flip this out, and then this pops open. Um, so yeah, seems pretty solid. Um, you know, just the, the design of it seems seems pretty good here. And so the way that this, of course, would, would work here is... You should just be able to, um, oops, let's just make sure I plug this in the right way here. So does it matter which side goes in first? Um, yep, the USB-C side goes in first, basically. So this would just plug right in to the bottom of the phone there. And then this is, you know, stretchable. And so this stretches open and should just be able to slide in the phone like so. And that's it. There's no click or anything, of course, because it's not attaching to anything there, but it holds it in because the force kind of pulls it together. And so now you have your controller, uh, which is actually pretty sweet. And so, again, because this is the charging port is used to connect the controller, you can connect USB-C cable down here and charge while you use the device, which is actually really, really nice. Um, so, in terms of actually using this bad boy, um, does it automatically, is it, is it already connected? Oh, actually, I already look at this. Um, the, the analog stick at the top actually is controlling my uh, device somewhat. Um, it's doing stuff. Let's see if it actually, if I go into my settings here, if it's actually recognizing that there's a device connected. Um, I don't know what setting option this would be in because I don't know Android very well. Uh, well let's go into connections. Uh, it's not Bluetooth, is it? Or is it available devices? Is it one of those devices or is it just... I don't really know, to be completely honest with you. Is it just automatically connected? Well, I guess let's find out, right? Let's go into the app. So we're gonna go back to the Game Pass app that we did before. Um, and, oh, as you can see in the Game Pass app, look, it's already like, yeah, I mean, it's working, right? Like I'm going up and down and and it's doing stuff already. So it automatically just recognized it all, which is actually really, really cool. So what I actually want to try is I want to play some Power Rangers Battle for the Grid because that's on Game Pass. So why don't we uh, try that out, huh? Let's see how this actually loads. Um, and I suppose I should turn my volume up here. 
All right. So let's see if it just automatically uh, has everything all set up and ready to go with the controls. Maybe it just recognizes it as a controller. I will say so far, I mean, it does feel pretty comfortable. Um, so so I, I, I think I probably, I, you know, it remains to be seen as I play some more. But I, but I would imagine doing this might be more comfortable than having to have a separate controller attachment. Alright. Let's turn down this volume a little bit just so we don't get flagged for any uh, <laughs> audio. Now, this will be a good test because fighting games traditionally input lag is a uh, quite the challenge, right? That's a, that's a big... Big, big challenge. Um, also, I just want to see if there's a any type of a cross-play sort of thing. Um, well, I guess let's just jump into versus mode. I'll worry about all that later. Um, okay. So let's do... Yeah, whatever. Okay. And we'll have the computer team just be whatever. Okay, and sure, random arena. Let me turn down my uh, studio lights a bit here so that you can really see the screen and gameplay. All right, let's see how well this actually functions in practice. Now, I know you can use the D-pad for fighting games. I end up usually using the control stick. I mean, at a glance, I'm not gonna lie, it seems fine. I don't, I'm not really experiencing any specific, you know, input lag or anything. I'll bring in the Red Ranger here. I mean, I have this game on Switch, you know? Um, now, it is a, this, the Xbox is gonna have a higher quality uh, in terms of graphical prowess, but I am also streaming the game, right? So it's not like I'm playing directly onto the TV. Um, so it is a very interesting comparison, right? But, I will say, I did play some Battle for the Grid recently on Switch, um, and I will say, like, this does not feel any differently. I'm just kind of jumping right in already. Um, so, this is pretty great. I, I mean, this is a fighting game, right? Fighting games require precise movement. I'm not seeing any, like, screen tearing or any other, like, frame rate issues that, um, at least... I, I usually don't notice minor dips in frame rate, but if it's something pretty bad, like, you know, it's pretty noticeable, right? Um, but for me, as a casual fighting game fan, it's working pretty well. Like, this is pretty solid, not gonna lie, I'm actually enjoying this quite a bit. And so far, it's, it's pretty comfortable uh, for what it is. I will say, I've played this game on the Switch Lite, and after a little while, it starts to hurt your hand, you know? Um, I think the regular Switch is a little bit better because it is kind of a bigger system. It has more support, just the way it's designed for this type of game, at least, in my opinion. Um, so it remains to be seen how this actually lasts in practice. Um, I will say the one thing, if I can uh, pause, oh, yeah, I guess this is like your pause button, is that th I wish that there was some other type of a, a grip or something at the bottom here, because like my pinky, I don't really know what to do with it. It's kind of sitting down here or up here, right? Like, this is kind of just going into the palm of my hand here. So I will say that, like, you know, I guess I can try and wrap my whole hand around the back in, in a way. Um, but, again, here in the back, my pinky can kind of rest here. But on the other side, this juts out a bit more. The opening is here, right? Because it's the opposite. So I can't do that. So if I'm holding it uh, like this 
um, my pinky's there, but on the other side, I can't, I can't really do that super comfortably. So I, I don't know how long this is going to be viable in, in long-term sessions, you know? Um, so that's where maybe having an Xbox controller, now that's the disadvantage is you have to kind of have the separate thing with the screen up top, which is not too bad. The Xbox controller is comfortable, right? Because it has those extra grips uh, for the palm of your hand. So this, keep in mind, um, you know, we'll see how it, how it goes over long-term sessions. I'm sure if anyone has any questions about it, I can update you in the comment section later on after using it some more. But um, so far, um, you know, my initial thought, I'll, let me try and put my pinkies just kind of in the back here and... Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm about to finish up this game anyway, so I figured I might as well wrap it up. But there you go. That's Battle for the Grid, streaming via Xbox Game Pass onto my Android device. Um, there I'm getting some frame rate <laughs> during the cutscene and actually the Wi-Fi icons popping up there. But during the game it was fine, you know? Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, oh, so this brings up your Xbox kind of home menu just like as if you're pushing the Xbox button. So really what I would want is to tap the screen and then be able to quit game from there. <clears throat> All right, not bad. That actually worked pretty well. <coughs> so the second thing that I wanted to test, kind of semi-related, is this new Xbox app that's in beta, as you can see. It's kind of got a black background here. And so, oh, this app just crashed. Um, let me try and sign in. I don't know if it's gonna show my email or anything. Oh no, I'm right in. Um, Oh, Xbox beta keeps stopping. It was just working before this, but now that I have the controller plugged in, maybe that's causing the issue? I don't know. Um, all right, let's, let me just try and swipe through and then see. So it shows you different games that you've been playing recently and you can sort of just jump back in. Uh, and I'm curious because this, what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to just be able to jump right into um, a game that's already installed onto um, onto your device. Now this is already, it's already on my console. Let's see if there's, I guess, because, hmm, is there only certain games maybe that you can do this for? I looked it up and I figured it out. It was right there in front of my face. So in the Xbox beta app, um, when I was looking at my library here, under consoles, Xbox One X, I was clicking on manage to look at it. There's a giant green connect button right there uh, that I did not click on. So let's click on that and uh, actually take a look. So let me go back to turning off my, my studio lights so that we can actually see what the screen looks like. And hey, there you go. We are actually looking directly at my Xbox One X right now. Um, and so I figured I would test this out with the, uh, the one and only uh, Fortnite right here um, because that's like the main game that I play on Xbox to be completely honest. Uh, <laughs> so let's uh, <coughs> boot this thing up and see how it actually runs. Now remote play um, is not necessarily new to Xbox but I'm curious to see how it performs and with this the enhanced capabilities here with this beta app. Um, I am getting the little you know Wi-Fi icon there, so it's not the greatest sign, but I guess we'll find out once I actually hop into a game to see uh, how it actually is. <clears throat> and so the difference is I'm actually, I'm not playing Fortnite directly on my Android device, right? I'm playing Fortnite on my Xbox, um, which is a little different. So graphically, it's gonna look a little different. Um, probably not the most ideal in terms of, you know, frame rate capabilities, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is just a sample game. There's other games that you can play, you know, from this example. I just wanted to use Fortnite because, you know, it's a game that I play all the time. Um, because this is pretty much on everything. Oh yeah, BTS and Fortnite, that's right. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly jump into a game, that way, you know, we, we don't waste too much time here. Oh no, stop squad fills, I don't wanna do squad fills. That's not gonna be good. I don't want to be playing with random people right now. No, not squads. What am I doing? Let's go to solos. There we go. 
Uh, now I'm on track. Got my uh, customized Peter Parker uh, <laughs> skin right there, as you can see. Boom. So let's see how this game actually performs. Because this is a very online heavy game, you know, I guess it remains to be seen how the actual performance is, but we're gonna try it out. And then I'm also gonna be curious when the Xbox Series X comes out, which by the way, I did pre-order, um, to see how the performance is for that as well, if it's any better or not. <coughs> Obviously the internet is gonna be kind of the, the biggest factor here. Um, oh, you can already see right there, look at the quality of that. Um, not the greatest. Uh, let's go to the authority, because usually people don't land there. So that way I'll be able to actually go and see if I can find a weapon or something. Alright, so right now it seems to be okay. Um... The sensitivity on the control stick is a little odd. Um, I, I don't think I'm used to this necessarily. It doesn't seem to be as sensitive as, as I normally would get. At least playing directly on the Xbox. <clears throat> but let's see. So. We're just going to go over to the authority here. And see how we actually do. Oh, we're getting a little bit of weird stuff happening with the screen there. Um, yeah, I will say these types of triggers are not the greatest, in my opinion, for this type of game. God, this is not the greatest gun either. This is not going to end well. Okay, that's better. Because it's not like a quick little click. It's, um, how do I explain it, right? Like it's, you have to really kind of pull down on the trigger. And that's not the greatest feel for this type of game, in my opinion. I just want to at least get like a kill, you know? And then after that, who knows what happens, but... Okay. Come on, footsteps. Where are you? Is it below? Doesn't look like it. All right. Where are all these other people that are here? Somebody is definitely building.
Where are they? I'm like so confused right now, right? I don't know what's going on. What? Sorry, this is kind of a boring game of Fortnite. Yeah, I will say the sensitivity feels slightly off from directly playing on the Xbox because like I moved my control stick uh, a decent amount, but it only moves slightly on here. So it, it's a little odd. I think I think if you are going to be playing on this a lot more, you are going to want to adjust your sensitivity. But then again, Fortnite's probably not the greatest game to demonstrate because yeah, I can just play this directly on Android anyways. But I just wanted to, you know, kind of show that. Sorry, that was very anticlimactic. Uh, for a demo video of this, not the greatest uh, scenario for me to show, but I at least wanted to to get that out the way. Um, and then of course I can uh, um, exit out of here just like normal right there. And uh, yeah, otherwise uh, that's pretty much how it is. Let me see if I can actually, I just want to try one other thing. Let's go to my games here. Something like Assassin's Creed, the Ezio collection, just to show you that you can boot it up um, right in here. And uh, I mean, again, you can just jump right in. Games that even aren't on Game Pass just remotely connect into your Xbox, which is pretty sweet. So anyways, that's enough of that. Um, the ability to stream your games to your phone. I mean, you saw how it works. You saw how this controller works. Um, and it's it's been pretty pretty solid of an experience overall. And it's really easy too. So again, you can just kind of slide this right out, take your phone out there, and now, you know, align the, the tabs. There we go, and then click in the back part, and there you go. So very easy, very portable if you want to be able to take this around with you. So um, check that out. Uh, that is the Razer Kishi. It is available now. Uh, if you want the Xbox version, it's literally the exact same thing, just different you know, style buttons, you can wait or try and find that or pay more money for it. But honestly, this is good enough as is. They do actually make this for iOS as well. However, the Game Pass stuff is not compatible with iOS. So if you do like this controller and you want to use it with your other games on iOS, then hey, absolutely, I think that's a, a, a great idea. This um, will not work with iOS because this is USB-C here. So Keep that in mind, it's not like you can buy one Razer Kishi device and use it for both iOS and Android, unfortunately, because iPhone's my main phone and I have this Android device as well. Um, if I wanted to use it on iOS, I would have to buy another one of these for iOS. So that is one uh, important you know, disclaimer there, so keep that in mind. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. As always, take care, and I will see you later.